So Chris, welcome back again. Thank you. <laughs> it's great, great to be great, here. Great having you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, as you know from our last year experience, we do this uh, one question per year. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, uh, to sort of celebrate the launch of IELOL this year, we picked a new question. Okay. So this question is on top of everybody's mind right now, it's sort of the national conversation about retention, student retention. It's one thing to get students into the class. Uh, it's another thing to get them through to their end of the academic goals, okay. or however we define it, which is my first question for you is, when you think of the term retention or persistence, what's that mean to you, in, in, in particular in your context? Well, it has a lot to do with student success for me. You know, we have uh, our student success metrics that our governing board has set for us. But more importantly, it's got to be focused on, you know, uh, what the student can really um, get out of what we're offering them. And so we're providing uh, strategies to our uh, faculty and others. You know, we're working together to get students to be more successful in courses and programs. So what we do is we have a gateway opportunity for students when they come to us to um, see whether they're degree uh, seeking students or they're uh, not degree seeking mm. students because we have a large number of people with the 48 start dates that we have and the flexibility that we provide and very affordable at $84 a credit hour people who just stop in and then transfer their credit so they bank and transfer uh, to other institutions so for them it's really uh, a retention and persistence in a course mm. <clears throat> and for those who declare that they wanted to get a degree or credential from us, then it's more about, it's beyond the course, it's really about the whole program. You know, I really, so we, when you were talking about that today, I really appreciated the fact that you have the flexibility to, you, that's both success for you, right, if, yeah. in, in both environments. Sometimes we get really locked down as they have to have our degree, you know, in, in the yeah. end. And your, your observation that we want to be able to serve whatever needs they might have. I thought that was really a refreshing perspective. Yeah, and it's very difficult to pull off because you have to have a, flex a lot of flexibility among the faculty, among the staff to be able to do that. But because we have a strong articulation and transfer system, mm -hmm. um, we can do that very successfully with private and public institutions and our students really benefit for that. So we have accepted mm -hmm. that place in the ecosystem mm -hmm. for us to be that way. Now we just need to prove to our regulators and accreditors mm -hmm. This is a good thing. I think they agree with that. It's just that we have to have uh -huh. good data systems in place uh -huh. to follow student success yeah, so yeah, you can yeah. really document that. Because they might have a different idea of retention and saying, geez, we're seeing not all of your students are, are, are receiving their right. certificate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't exactly. thought about that. Yeah. So you've got to be able to have the data to back up to say, looking at it long term, no, we can show you where they're finishing out. It just might right. be at another institution. Absolutely. So my second question has to do with this um, sort of wild blue sky idea of uh, if you had all the resources and if you had, if you had uh, all the time and the money, what would a, um, a system look like that would help a student succeed in their educational goals? Well, I would team up with like an Amazon or a Netflix. So mm -hmm. when a student woke up in the morning <laughs> with their morning coffee, they could uh, flip like on, you know, the television like and that. it would tell them where they are, Interesting. you know, have a dashboard for mm -hmm. them. Um, you know, there are courses that you've already taken. Here's some more that you and might This is all personalized to me, right? <laughs> it's yeah, it's personalized yeah, 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 to yeah, you. Yeah. And uh, you can see how you compare to your other students, either in your class, or your institution, mm. or other peer institutions nationally. Um, it would be where you could uh, really get a degree from uh, an institution of your choice. You could just combine the courses that are transferable between these institutions to build a program uh, to be able to do that. I think that's really the future of higher education. I think that people mm. are going to be able to piece this together. We're seeing the straighter lines of the world mm -hmm. and offering sure. courses at $99. And they're not even accredited institutions, but they're uh, getting a lot of traffic of students and then getting partners like Rio Salado now. We just joined up with them to have them enter into a degree program because they're not um, accredited institutions. Right, yeah, right. They're just uh, helping students uh, help them find their way mm -hmm. and taking courses at 99 dollars sure. a course and then to be able to find an institution that is accredited and, and is the right they fit can transfer for the right right yeah. fit for the student so we're already seeing some uh, real innovation yes. in that can you imagine in that space where mm. you have all the money uh, that uh, education and you know whatever services you want to really provide uh, can come and with the power of technology together with that and you have these sub uh, syndicated professors, you know, yeah, the yeah, best yeah, Harvard yeah, yeah, yeah. or sure. Yale professor sure. in chemistry. If you want to take your mm. course from them, you can certainly do mm. that. Um, 
Wow, wow, wouldn't that be wonderful? Be Somebody cool. to be able to put that together. I think um, with technology and, and uh, where education is headed, I think that's, that's possible. So instead of, um, I, I just am thinking of the traditional model I went to my education here at Penn State is they had the form and format and I fit to it. Right. Now, uh, thankfully I fit most of the time and I did okay. The model you're, des you're describing is like completely reversing mm -hmm. that and to say what is your form and format student mm -hmm. and we'll fit the institution to you and your needs. Right. Yeah. It'll, it won't be without standards or sure. without some... A policy construct, sure. right? But yeah. it will be a place where there's more flexibility yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. So um, I think I might know the answer. I'm not going to say it, of course, but uh, to this next question that you might give me. But um, so my question is, we, we don't probably today have all of these resources, although I, I think the vision you're painting is maybe not too far off for us. What's one thing that we can begin, uh, a step we might take to begin on that process toward that kind of an experience for our learners. Okay, and you mean um, what kind of process where they have less? Uh, well, where you have built this system. So you described the oh, system. Oh, that system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what's one thing we might be able to do as an institution to, to take a step toward that kind of an environment? Oh, okay. Well, I think we have to embrace technology more and mm. its uh, capabilities, certainly that. Um, we have to have a vision uh, in working with our constituencies to see what they want to accomplish. A lot of times they don't know by themselves, mm -hmm. but together you're able to work people through that. What is the vision for a higher education system that serves our community well? It's really listening to that voice mm -hmm. of our constituency and, mm -hmm. and then building it uh, that way with the end in mind rather mm -hmm. than what we need as an institution necessarily. I was necessarily. gonna say with their end in mind. Right, exactly. Right, right now end. we kind of drive it from our end in mind. Right. Uh, that that's a really refreshing view. It's a little radical uh, because it, you know I keep on picturing this thing where the university is really forming around me, mm -hmm. rather than me having to conform to the university. But I think it's somewhere in the middle. I think yeah, uh, yeah. you know in that whole process, mm -hmm. uh, the student isn't going to get everything that they want, sure. but certainly they're going to get a lot more flexibility and yeah. affordability, maybe accessible yeah. accessibility. Um, and and uh, with the standard of keeping the quality yeah. up there too. You know, I can't help but wonder, as I, I was going through my college experience, if I had had a system like that, mm -hmm. uh, if I'd had, um, frankly, better guidance and suggestions. I'm not, I, I have a wonderful degree. I just appreciate what I, I had. Um, but what I might be doing different than what I'm doing today. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That that, um, yeah. that guidance through that system would have been really, really beneficial. I got the standardized, you know, I met with my advisor once a semester and sort of conformed. So I really like this idea of this personalized environment. And it sounds to me from, from your talk this evening that you folks are working toward that kind of an environment for your learners, and that's, that's really to be admired. We are, and, uh, you know, uh, research uh, indicates that students are much more successful when they take a student success course initially at the start oh, yeah, yeah, of their yeah, program, and sure. so we've been instituting that, and that's had wow. great effects in really? terms of uh, retention and people wow. staying for the longer haul, and then that whole career exploration and degree exploration, doing it in that course yeah. to get them more focused on making sure that they want uh, to choose a path. Yeah. That's really helpful to them. But you're so interested in what their goals are mm -hmm. and then beginning to construct an environment that's going to help them reach their goals. Right. I, I just love that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much again. No, it's you're al welcome. always a pleasure. Always a Thank pleasure you. to be with you, Larry. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you.